Welcome to part two of the tutorial series on the Artillery 2 plugin by Sugarbytes. In this segment I'm going to talk about the various devices in the Artillery 2 and I'm going to demonstrate some of the assignments of modulators. In this little demonstration I've got a phaser set up and I've got some keyboard control over the rate of the phase cycle. Check this out. <laughs> Assigning the keyboard tracking is done with this knob here. In this example I've got a combination object called a filter delay. To make an assignment of a modulator you simply select the target and go over here and select from the modulators that are available. In this case I'm using an envelope generator to modulate the cutoff point of the filter in the filter delay. What's nice about these controls is that they're adjustable in reference to the tempo of your song. <laughs> With a negative implementation set here, the attack time will cause the cutoff point to slowly fade down over the time set here, which is one bar. In this example, I've set up two turntable effects. The first MIDI note is going to trigger a stopping effect, and I've set it to go very slowly to create a phasing effect. The second implementation here is set up to cause a rising pitch effect of the startup of a turntable. <laughs> In this example, I'm using a time stretching effect from the granular folder. This can be used to create a looping effect. I've also set up a reverb on one key so that every time I press the time stretch key, I'm adding reverb as well. In the next example, I'm going to show you the step looper. I've chosen a step sequencer to modulate the size of the loop. Each time you press a key with the step looper, it plays the number of loops set in this value here. So what I'm actually doing is changing this value with a step sequencer here. And in the step sequencer, you can control the rate and the number of steps and a smoothing effect between the steps. <laughs> In this example, I'm using just a straightforward looper. In this example, I'm using the vowel filter. Here I've got the vowel tone for vowel A controlled by a slow sine wave, cycling through at a rate of one period per bar. This will enable the vowel tone for A to slowly cycle through the vowel options. I'm modulating the vowel B choice with a 16th note step sequence. The vowel mix lets you control the value between vowel setting A and vowel setting B. And I'm modulating the vowel mix with an envelope generator. If you recall from the first tutorial, with every effect setting that you have, you can adjust your wet-dry balance here. You can also have a timed attack value right here, which can be set either by dragging or by setting it in this box. This enables your effect to ease in and out and you have slope control here. Here I've chosen a low pass filter. I'm using the envelope follower to allow the amplitude of the input signal to control the effect. The parameters available allow you to control how accurately it rides the volume change. And I'm going to adjust the modulation amount by assigning a MIDI controller. Right click, MIDI learn, and away we go. Choosing the multi-filter allows you to select the filter type here. Here's a demonstration of the comb filter. Here I'm modulating the cutoff point of the comb filter with a step sequencer with 32 steps. <laughs> This effect called Sync Dumper is kind of like a gator. It enables you to adjust the rate by which the audio is chopped. What I'm doing is I have the rate modulated by a square wave every quarter note so that the rate of this amplitude pulsing will oscillate back and forth between 16th notes and eighths. <laughs> Thank you.
Kind of an interesting effect. In this example, I'm using two tonal delays. I've set them up in slightly different ways, but basically the pitch of the tonal delay is controllable from the key tracking. <laughs> I would imagine you're pretty tired of hearing this sample loop over and over again, so I think I'll end it there. So that's a little bit of a walk through the various processors of the Artillery 2 plugin. It's a really enjoyable piece of gear to work with with a really intuitive user interface. And don't forget the order of the way you play the keys determines the signal path of the effects. So if you want to throw a reverb shot on an already existing effect, just hit the effect note first and then hit the reverb note. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don Garbutt here for Music Marketing. <music>